Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Kylab, killing it like a boss once again. So, in today's video, I will be sharing the top 5 tips that all 2BTT players should know. Before I get into the list, please remember, this is targeted at newer players. If you are an older player, you probably know most, if not all of these. Please be sure to let me know which tips you found most helpful and which ones you were not aware of in the comments. I should also mention this list is in no particular order. Number 1. How to set a poll. This requires the following. Blocks, two Minecraft accounts and ender pearls. First of all, what is setting a poll? Basically, it is a method of traveling hundreds of thousands of blocks instantly. How is this possible? Well, to start, build up a tower in the desired location. Throw at least three ender pearls into the distance where the chunks are unloaded. If you do not get teleported, the pearl is set. Now take note of these coordinates for later use. The account that threw the pearls can now do slash kill to get to your spawn point. It is important no players load these chunks at any time until you would like to return. When you would like to get back to where you set the pearl, simply log into an alternate account and load the chunks. Note, the account that threw the pearl must be in the same dimension as where the pearl was thrown. How is this useful? Imagine you have two accounts at your base. You could set a pearl and do slash kill to go to spawn. When you would like to return to your base, simply load the chunks. This could also be used to transport an e-chest's worth of loot millions of blocks apart almost instantly. Number 2. How to use Elytra Flower with the Future Client. The following are required. An Elytra, Blocks and the Future Client. To start, first type the following commands in chat. Dot flight, glide speed, 0.0001 dot flight speed 18 now pause the video and make sure your settings match the ones displayed on the screen once your settings are correct build up to the desired height and now toggle flight and elytra fly remove the block below you and press spacebar this should put you in the flying position you can now fly around without rockets you can press shift to fly down, but unfortunately you cannot regain height once you have lost it, unless you build up again. Note, if you are flying through a 1x2 tunnel in the nether, toggle a hack by the name of Yaw. This will lock your view in one of the 8 cardinal directions, stopping you from crashing into walls. Number 3. How illegal items work. First of all, what are illegal items? Most illegals are stacked items that aren't usually stackable, for example stacked armor or stacked totems. At one point in time you were able to wear stacked armor and hold stacked pearls. In PvP when one armor set broke you would still have 63 left. It was basically like wearing a stack of armor at the same time or holding a stack of totems in one hand. As you can imagine this was really overpowered and fights would last forever. However, this brings me to the other kind of illegal item. These are known as 32k weapons. They are swords with sharpness 32,000 that kill you in one hit, and pickaxes with efficiency and fortune 32,000. However, I soon realized how overpowered these items were and added plugins that unstacked items when a shulker or chest is open. That brings us to this point in time where stacked items are mainly a means of storage. Imagine being able to store 50,176 totems in just your e-chest at any given time. To use stacked items you need to make a hopper chest train. Place the shulker on top of the hopper and slowly let it drain into the chests. Note, if you unload the chunk and reload it, the items will be reverted back to normal. 32k weapons on the other hand are slightly more interesting. Using some hacked clients, it is possible to place a shulker containing the weapons into a hopper. You then shift click the sword into your pot bar. If you have aura enabled, any passing players will be hit with enough damage to instantly pop any totems they may be holding. Even with auto totem and a decent amount of totems, it is fairly hard to survive a 32k weapon attack. Number 4. How to hide your base the right way. Now, this isn't some magical tip that will grant your base immunity. However, it is a trick I have personally used and some of my bases from back in 2016 are still standing to this very day. To start off, you shouldn't really be building a long term base any closer than around 150,000 blocks from spawn in the nether. As you probably know, every block traveled in the nether is 8 blocks in the overworld. So 150,000 blocks in the nether is over a million blocks in the overworld. 
After traveling down the highway for a decent amount of time, decide where you would like to turn off the highway. Now, you should be discreet about this. Mine in the opposite direction and somewhere along this path, mine down to the surface of the nether and travel back to the highway and continue in this direction. You should now travel at least 15,000 blocks off the highway. The further you go, the safer your base will be from random base hunters. Be sure to cover your trails and don't make the route you take obvious. Once you are in a decent location, make your portal. Write down the coordinates and go through the portal. You can then place a bed and set your spawn point. Now go back through the portal with nothing but a pickaxe and remove any traces of the portal. Then jump into the lava as not to leave any items on the ground. Now, you could build your base here, but for one extra step I would recommend to travel a few thousand blocks from the portal until you find a suitable base location. At the end of the day, you are the biggest threat to your base. You should never post screenshots or invite people you don't really trust. Number 5. A general tip. Now this should be obvious to all of you, but 2B2T is not the most hospitable of places. And it should come as no surprise that some very intelligent players call this chaotic server their home. Do not ever trust any software developed or distributed by any 2BTT player. You should always be suspicious whether it's a mod or a hacked client. Unless it is open source, even so, be careful. Even if the majority of the community is using a client, it does not make it safe. Think for yourself and use common sense to your advantage. Another thing, please be aware of IP grabbing links. It literally takes 30 seconds to set up an IP grabbing link with Grabify. With your IP, a player can geolocate your location, allowing them to dox you, or they could DDoS your internet. 2B2T players have been known to do this with no other reason than being toxic for toxic sakes. This all being said, there are some very nice people who play this very same server, and not everyone you meet is out to get you. Bonus fact. I spent some time looking into dot peak, which is a command that allows you to look inside a shulker box without unstacking the items. Around 6 months ago, House added a plugin to stop book banning. And unfortunately, this had the side effect of removing NBT data from shulkers in your inventory. This means dot peak no longer worked. However, soon after the patch, a dot peak bypass mod started floating around. This mod worked by dropping the items on the ground and picking it up again using the dot peak command. Unfortunately, this was also patched and as far as I know, there is no currently working dot peak bypass method. A quick shout out to a member of my discord by the name of Robert, who helped me in my research. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I'd like to quickly shout out Fangesto, who sponsors my Patreon which helps me create this content. If you did enjoy, please be sure to check out my other videos or leave a like and subscribe. It's been your boy Kylab, peace in the Middle East. I would like to introduce Go!